<clears throat> well, good evening. I'm Rick Dancer, and welcome to uh, Get Real with Rick Dancer. And it's an interesting evening here in the uh, little metropolis of Eugene in Springfield, Oregon. Um, we appreciate those of you who are showing up here. Please tell your friends and share this with other people. We will be sharing it tomorrow um, with our Facebook pages, but um, we had a little issue with Facebook and they decided uh, last night at uh, 10 o'clock or something in the evening to shut down my profile page. And so because I have administrators like Tim and uh, my wife, um, we still have access to our pages, but we can't put everything together uh, because Facebook won't allow it. So we are appealing it and uh, we don't know what we did wrong because that's the great thing about Facebook. They never tell you uh, what you did wrong. I think it looks to me like somebody hacked my account and that's pretty common, uh, but normally it doesn't take this long to get it fixed. So we're just going to wing it. We're going to see what else we got going on here. So tonight we got a great show for you. We're going to, uh, you guys been to Swallowtail Distillery in Springfield. Uh, Kevin's going to be talking with us. Derek Roser from uh, Roser Real Estate Company. They're going to be doing a business a month um, from here on out and focusing on local business. Hi, Donna. How are you? Good to have you over here on YouTube. Um, so we're going to be doing a business a month. And tonight you're going to get the opportunity to win some $20 gift cards to Swallowtail that you can use as you wish um, over there. And then we're going to be talking about dreaming because I like to dream. And Lonnie Woodruff with Transworld, he's a business consultant. What he really does is help you figure out what you want to do with your life. Um, so a lot of us get to a point where we just want, we, we don't realize that there are businesses and things we could expand ourselves to. Uh, we're too afraid and we get stuck in the same thing and then we just wait to retire and die. Well, I'm not into that and neither is Lonnie. So he's going to come along and talk to us about how you can sell a business you have and also how you can buy one. And he's going to be focusing on businesses for the rest of the year too. So we're going to have a lot of business focus because we all know that people in our business community need a lot of assistance. Um, but let's start the night off uh, with Chris, oh, our sponsors. Um, they have great vodka. Do they, Eric? I, I'll tell you what, I've had their gin and it's really good. And they're making a whiskey, I think, now too. But Eric's going to show us around because they kind of fixed up the, the, the one section that was going to be for production and they kind of fixed that up too. So we'll have that. Um, our show is sponsored by Chris Dental Family Dentistry, um, where everyone is welcome. Funny, I had a lady walk up to me on the street today and she says, does Dr. Bradlin make you have to have your vaccine? I said, nope. Your vaccination status does not matter to Dr. Bratlin. He cares about your dental health um, and he wants to make sure you get that treated. So he's one of our sponsors. Derek Roser uh, is another sponsor. And then Lonnie with Transworld uh, is a third sponsor. And also Buck Sanitary Service. Um, uh, one of our great sponsors. I met with Scott last week and uh, one of our really great sponsors as well. So let's get started. We'll get uh, Bill coming up here with the news right after the open. And then we'll move on to Swallowtail. Hang in there. puts up with this? That's what I don't understand. Bring the lion out. Bring the, bring the lion. Um, tonight on our show, we're going to have... Hey guys, don't you think it's kind of fun that you get to comment on the news? There's a cost. Oh yeah, there's a cost. People come after you. Like, I think that's why this is so much fun is because... We'll see you at five. Good evening from the News Radio 1120 and 93.7 FM KPNW Studios. I'm Bill London, but you can just call me Rick's Coiffure Antithesis. I do the wake up call mornings on KPNW from 6 a.m. to 9, but nobody gets up that early. All right, here's a look at some of the stories I we're do. following. So Portland has lost about 300 police officers in the last two years, and they started an initiative in November to rehire officers who retired from the force because they're bleeding officers and they wanted experienced officers come, to come back. Well, Police Chief Chuck Lovell personally reached out to 81 former Portland Police Department members urging them to come back to the force to, in his words, help this once vibrant city come back to life. 
He also claimed that officers now have considerable support from elected officials, and the goal was to rehire at least 25 retirees as part of an initiative crafted by the Portland City Council who are facing skyrocketing crime in the city. The deadline for the retirees interested in coming back was January 15th. Well, out of the 81 officers that the chief contacted directly, exactly two showed interest. One officer with the department for over 18 years, Stephanie Hudson, she retired back in May, wrote a nasty gram to the city saying the idea of having considerable support from the city council was, quote, laughable. Hudson also mocked Lovell, whose letter said that they would not consider rehiring officers found to have violated policy by quote, cooperating with federal agents to attack Portland residents. Now that caveat and disqualifier was put in by anti-police city commissioner Joanne Hardesty, who enlisted the help of dozens of Oregon traffic barrels to fight crime in Oregon's Mordor. Hudson said about that disqualifier, your letter indicates that nothing has changed. It simply highlights why those who could leave did leave. The reference to cooperating with federal agents to attack Portland residents also drew criticism from most of the retirees, many who left the Bureau after working nightly protests, which rational people refer to as riots, during the mass justice demonstrations in the city. Well, we told you about an advocacy group that wanted to legalize sex work here in Oregon, and they had gotten a ballot initiative that they were collecting signatures for. Well, they now have, if you will, pulled out. It turns out that they want to take a chance to tweak and improve the policy. The group had filed the prospective petition with the state on November 16th and in mid-December, they actually qualified for a ballot initiative title. Aaron Boonshoft, the chief petitioner, and I love this, whom the campaign describes as an Oregon philanthropist, an advocate of human rights, and a client of legal conceptual sex work, decided to make the withdrawal. It marks the second time in the past two years that advocacy groups have tried and failed to some extent to decriminalize sex work in Oregon. By the way, we're coming up on the deadline and the Oregon Supreme Court is going to finally make a decision on whether Nick Kristoff, the Democratic New Yorker who says he feels like an Oregonian, whether he's going to be able to run for governor or not. Now, of course, Secretary of State Shamia Fagan said, no, he's not qualified because he didn't live here long enough. He violates the three-year residency requirement. Then you had an amicus brief filed on November, on January 24th by six women of color who urged the court to rule against Kristoff. And then you have now, uh, which, and this happened on the 25th, former secretaries of state Bill Bradbury and Gene Atkins, who filed an amicus brief arguing that Fagan got it wrong and they want the court to put Kristoff on the ballot. Anyway, the court is expected to rule in a few days. We'll see. All right, we have a short legislative session that is coming up, and I'm going to spend the rest of my little time here with you, courtesy of Rick, uh, to kind of run down what we're going to see happen during this next legislative session, because some things are becoming a little bit more clear. So it is supposed to be a short session, 35 days, and here's what it looks like the legislative priorities are going to be. Keep in mind that Democrats hold a supermajority, so they're pretty much calling the shots. And now they have outlined, Governor Kate Brown and top leaders in the Democratic Party have outlined what the priorities are going to be. And if you look at Brown's priorities alone, they're going to add up to potentially $2 billion in new spending. And a lot of it is likely to garner Democratic support. Republican leaders in the State House and Senate indicated that they are opposing a lot of ambitious products or projects for the upcoming session and once again may even resort to yes, walking out. 
So lawmakers start meeting on February 1st for the 35-day session. Brown says that she wants these things dealt with. Brown says that lawmakers have at least $2 billion in unexpected tax collections and federal pandemic money to spend. No, don't put it in a rainy day fund, just spend it. So here's what she's saying. Topping her list, $200 million for a plan called Future Ready Oregon that she's already shopped to Democratic leaders, which would help ethnic and racial minorities and underserved communities train for careers in healthcare, manufacturing, and construction. Democratic leaders have their priorities as well, including spending money on housing and summer school pro programs. More on that in a sec. One of Brown's priorities is housing. She wants to spend $400 million for affordable housing, at-risk manufactured housing, and home ownership support and counseling. She says she wants to extend a uh, expand a state program that also provides matching funds for low-income Oregonians to save money to buy a home. Uh, this would come on top of $215 million that lawmakers approved in a December special session to provide even more rental assistance and forestall evictions. Brown wants the legislature to approve $150 million for child care and early learning programs, $200 million for extra salaries for behavioral health care workers, $120 million to fund the Elliott State Forest, $120 million to move Harriet Tubman Middle School away from I-5 in Portland. Now we have House Majority Leader Julie Fahey. She says that Democrats want to increase access to health care, child care, and housing. They want to improve the state's supply of homes by spending money, including modular homes for those displaced by wildfires. Representative Dan Rayfield, the Democrat from Corvallis, who is going to be named House Speaker, says that he is going to move proposals concerning climate change that's a lot. Then you have House Bill 4079, which has support, sponsored by State Representative Brad Witt. It would create a sales tax to give debit cards to lower income people loaded with $750 million that they could spend on monthly payments. The sales tax would be on electronic goods, computers, cell phones, certain vehicles, and, quote, clothing of a higher value. The sales tax on cell phones would be on top of the newly passed cell phone service tax that passed the legislature in 2020. The sales tax would also tax airplanes, recreational vehicles, and boats. I'm calling House Bill 4079 the, this is why we can't have anything nice bill. So what do the Republicans want to do? Well, they want to, according to House Minority Leader Vicki Breeze Iverson, focus on budgetary issues like cutting taxes and rolling back COVID-related mandates and regulations on businesses to help restore education standards and to aid students struggling socially and academically. According to Breeze Iverson, if we see highly partisan and complex bills being rushed through the legislature in February, we are prepared to use the tools necessary to us, which of course means walking out. I just wanna say, if you think back to over a decade ago, when Democrats pushed the idea of adding this extra short legislative session, they said it was for Two reasons. Now, mind you, this was done through a change in the Oregon Constitution that was voted on by Oregon voters. And they specifically said they wanted the short session so they could address budget issues and the biennial budget and legislative tweaks. And now it's become essentially a free for all with once again, pet projects that were supposed to be held off until the long sessions. Well, that's what you get for believing our leadership. 
All right, Rick, roll them with your realness. I love having Bill involved because <clears throat> he digs and he knows what he's talking about. And uh, you are not going to hear that anywhere else in Oregon. <laughs> I'll guarantee you. So a few years ago, um, met Kevin over at Swallowtail and uh, he and Erica and uh, they make re I kept hearing about this this new distillery in town. And then when Springfield started beefing up and everything became about downtown Springfield, um, Kevin put up a swallowtail right there in the, in the section there. And in fact, and, and Derek Roser's there right now. I'm going to bring them in here. He can't hear me very well because it's, you know, it's, this is life. It's uh, it's a place. They turn the music down, but still. So Derek, we've got Kevin there. We've got distillery. I know you're just sipping a teeny bit, which kind of makes me a little bit jealous, but tell me about uh, what you're doing and what Kevin's doing. Let's hear from him. Yeah. So um, basically the last few months, Rick, you know, we've been uh, um, asking your viewers to nominate a business, a local business in Eugene or Springfield that has been, an integral part of, you know, holding things together for the last, uh, you know, the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, um, Kevin, uh, was nominated by one of your viewers, uh, Swallowtail Spirits. And, um, you know, I, I met him a, a while back. I came down here and got some hand sanitizer from him to, to use at my, um, my house listings. So anyway, just, uh, I thought this would be kind of fun to come down here and uh, and let Kevin talk a little bit about himself and his business. And uh, I'm going to give away some some gift certificates uh, for Swallowtail um, after you know after your show um, to any of your listeners who you know, provide some more um, basically some other businesses that might be deserving. So, so all they have to do is go to leads at rosarealestategroup.com, put yeah. in your favorite local company that you want to nominate, and then your name goes into a hat for, uh, for he's given away $200 with the gift cards, but two, $20 gift cards. So it's a great way to help other businesses and also get your name in there and uh, let people know what's going on. Yeah. I love, I love this. And we're going to do this every month with yeah. Rosa Realty. And for everybody, you know, we get people down here to Swallowtail, see what they're all about. Um, check out their, you know, their award-winning um, uh, spirits. So I'm going to let Kevin take it away because I might butcher it after this. <laughs> How's it going, Rick? So, uh, yeah, Swallowtail I'm Spirits. Well, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, we are Springfield's first distillery. Uh, this is the tasting room. And really gorgeous facility. And we do um, a lot of events here. Um, on Friday nights, uh, we're starting to put together a list of um, different music venues or music uh, acts that we can start to bring in. Uh, so we're going to start having uh, live music on Friday nights. Um, on Saturday nights, we have um, movie night. So you can see behind me, there's a 150-inch screen there. And we show all kinds of music, or I mean movies, uh, even music uh, concerts and stuff like that. But uh, it's our covered patio and heated as well. As you can see, there's... Uh, that's super nice, Kevin. I like that, Kevin. And somebody says your apple cider latte. Yeah, the apple cider is a, a seasonal one as far as taste. It's not necessarily a seasonal product. We have it all year long, but it, uh, uh, it's just made with our, our vodka and fresh pressed apple cider infused with uh, organic cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, ginger, and allspice. So it's like drinking an apple pie. It's uh, pretty dang good. Yeah, you're getting caught. People are liking that. They're saying they really like that alcohol that you're having. So, Kevin, how? Did, where did you start this? Was this in your like? I know you don't live far from there, but did you? How did, how did you start making spirits? Uh, well, my oddly enough, my degree was in geographic information systems, and when I uh, was going to college, I started distilling. Um, but uh, right at the end there, when I graduated, um, I went back. You know, late in life, but uh, I was working as a cartographer as a um, tax clerk at the Lane County Assessment and Taxation and as a research assistant at Oregon Research Institute. So I just decided to take the obvious next step and open a distillery. <laughs> um, it actually really started from uh, me making uh, bad batches of beer. So I started doing some home brewing and I thought it was just such a waste of uh, 
time and effort and grain and money when I uh, would make a bad batch of beer. So some people uh, started, uh, I started distilling it into whiskeys. Uh, people really liked it and encouraged me to do more of it. And uh, so that's where this started. And that's, so Kevin, what, <laughs> yeah, there's some uh, guys, cocktail shaking going on in the background there. <laughs> I see Erica back there. Tell her yeah. hi. So okay. are you, what do you guys make? What different alcohols do you make? Uh, we make uh, five different vodkas, five different gins, and four different whiskeys. So, um, uh, one of the whiskeys in particular we make in uh, collaboration with Ninkasi. It's called Otis. Uh, so it's their Otis oatmeal stout that we turn into a whiskey. We also have a corn whiskey, a bourbon, and a peat smoked single malt. Uh, I love so, I love your gin. I mean, you yeah, make the gins. I've gotten some really really great awards. Um, best gin overall in Hong Kong two years in a row. Uh, second best gin in the world with uh, the 50 bestcom So we've got, gotten some really amazing awards with those. So has this last two years with the pandemic been kind of rough? It's been really, really, really rough. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, we had to put up the patio cover. We always wanted to. It just came a little bit uh, sooner than what I had anticipated. But uh, uh, that's also designed to be a rooftop deck at some point in the future. But uh, we'll have to do quite a few upgrades before we can get to that. <laughs> so what are your hours? Tell people when you're there. Uh, we're here uh, right now, uh, Wednesday through Saturday from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. And um, we may be changing those hours coming shortly, but uh, just keep a lookout for that on uh, our Facebook page or our website. So. And then um, so people can come in in there and buy alcohol, too. They can buy fifths. But yep. you can also you guys are in most of the local liquor stores as well. Yeah, if you look. and uh, we definitely have everything here. So if your local liquor store doesn't carry it, because there's been a bit of a bottle shortage, so we try to keep us stocked here at least at the tasting room for our local crowd. Um, but uh, uh, we also have a full restaurant here as well. So um, come on in for you know food, beverage, good times. So all right, Kevin, thank you, man. I we appreciate seeing you again. <laughs> appreciate it. Have a good yeah, one. Derek, thanks, man. That's awesome. Hey, Rick. Well, there's a close-up. I didn't know if you want to get that close. <laughs> yeah, here, I'll do anyway. it. But, but, so yeah, yeah just, uh, you know, this is this is awesome, just supporting the local the local entrepreneurs. And uh, I love it. Um, I'm going to keep doing it. And, you know, everybody out there that's listening, just please, you know, send me a send me your favorite business that's helped out to leads at rosarealestategroup.com, and, and maybe they'll be on the show next month. And uh, just so you guys know, Derek is a realtor, and uh, we did sign the papers on my house, and it's gone. So yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, out, we're, we're, we're a success story. So we're, yes. we're on our way out. So thank you for helping us. Uh, you guys, uh, you did a great job, and we really appreciate you putting up with us. Um, yeah, selling a house is hard work. Yes. It is you're hard like, work. You're not, you're like not only finance guy, but you're also counselor, therapist. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, for sure. And, uh, All right, and, even, and even and even uh, what uh, dump runner. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, till you guys see what? So Derek drives a big trailer up in my yard, and it says you're going to need this because once you get done. Uh, you're going to find all this stuff you don't want to take with you. So, um, yeah, we, we, we're ready to fill that up. And then he comes and picks it up and takes it to the dump for me. I, I, call <laughs> I like that. Or, or maybe you make somebody else. It just, uh, you know, <laughs> does Casey end up doing that for you? Uh, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Derek. Thank right. you, man. Thanks, all right. man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good guy. And uh, we do want to focus on businesses and people just doing different things. And um, again, we appreciate you guys showing up the way you are here on uh, YouTube. You're coming in real loud and clear. You got the message and I do appreciate that. Um, yeah, life is a funny thing, isn't it? So that's Derek and uh, Swallowtail. And so what you heard, I thought that was kind of interesting because what you heard was um, uh, Kevin, the owner there saying that, you know, I, uh, I was working in the county assessor, sounds like fun, um, adding up, you know, making people's prices go up and decided to start taking a hobby and make it into a business. And that's perfect lead in to Lonnie Woodruff uh, from Trans World, a business consultant. And I know that sounds like what, you know, but he's I call him the dream dude, you know, I mean, because you really do take people who are either wanting to sell a business and they I bet there's a lot of people that don't think their business is worth that much. You know what I mean? Or I'm sure there's some that think too much. But I bet a lot of people just think, well, you know, and, and you can help 
you know there's people out there that just may want to do that and you can make that marriage happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's one of the many conversations I have with just anybody. Uh, if you have questions on that, your business, your industry, reach out. We have uh, data on all that kind of the multiples for each industry where you are and the, the more time you have before you sell. Maybe there's some things you got to work on to make your business even more appealing, more profitable, more valuable. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, yeah, so you, also yeah, good. So you could come in then and say, OK, so, Rick, here's here's some things you could do to really make that a, a better business. And in two years, if you want to sell it, then you can we, we can get you kind of going on that road. And that's part of what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have all those conversations. Uh, you can have, say, five plumbing companies. They're all going to be valued differently. Maybe their five plumbing companies all have five employees. Still might be valued differently depending on the internal dynamics, the profitability, the age of the equipment. All, all, there's so many variables that go into valuing a business. Because of COVID, do you think that more um, – two things that I'm thinking – is it do you think that more people are ready to sell, but also there's just as many people ready to get out of the corporate and the bullshit and go find their thing and do it themselves? I mean, it's kind of it's kind of push. It puts the dross to the top and now there's gold underneath, but you got to get that stuff up. Is that true? Um, man, yeah. The I'd say it's been stressful for everybody. Some people didn't make it. I mean, there's if you noticed around town, there's some businesses that shut their doors. Um, never to reopen. Some shut down because they still can't find staff. Uh, some industries flourished. The hot tub, recreational activity, RV industry, used car lots, they're all flourishing. But um, And there's a lot of people that are looking to jump out of you know the corporate world as well. Um, yeah. So it's, I don't know. I don't know how to answer that directly. It's been hard on everybody. Yeah. You know, and that's why I think Derek and you have also, you and I talked today about doing something similar is where you're helping local businesses. So if you guys know of businesses, let us know because we really want to promote them and that promotes our community. And, um, and that's what you and Derek both are really big about doing. Absolutely. I think 2022 should be about supporting the local economy, local businesses. Like I never seen the inside of Swallowtail. That's a beautiful place. Derek's smarter than both of us. We're still hanging out in our offices. He's down there having a good time. <laughs> He's down there sampling. Right, you know? exactly. Yeah. <laughs> See, and that's what I kind of love about what I get to do with you, especially on this, is and Derek, because we can take people into places. Because I think if you drive by a place, you never see what you know, or, or and to talk to the owner. And I think it's good for all of us to dream a little and hear people saying, you know, yeah, I, I was uh, working at the assessor's office. I didn't know that about Kevin. I've known him for several years. I had no idea. And he took a hobby and made it into a business. And there's, there, there's a lot of people that do can think that, but you can kind of consult them and get them from the dreaming to the visionary. I, I can expedite that process. Very, yeah, very much so. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, his sounds like a hobby born business. Um, that, that takes a lot of bootstrapping. That is awesome. He has a beautiful place. Sometimes it's easier to buy an existing business or some version of that. Um, and that's kind of what I do. I make that marriage for people that want to sell. They got good businesses and find somebody who wants to buy, um, whether it be somebody from the corporate world. Maybe they sold a business a few years ago. Now they're bored. Now they need another hobby. You know, <laughs> Maybe they're maybe they're married and they thought they were empty nesters. Now now they want to buy another business because they've been to Europe. Now they're bored. So I, I don't know. Uh, well, I, I've seen a little bit of everything. Well, you and you'd also get people. I think that like I remember we had the bicycle guy on here. Yeah, and it was a cool story because he he knew. I, I think what I like about that so much is that he didn't know anything about bicycles or what he was getting into. Um, you counseled him into the business. Um, and then he found out he just loved it and, and, and it opened up a whole new world for him. You know, That's and I think so many people, I think, are stuck. And, as, you know, especially after COVID and all this, we're just stuck. And it's like it's a way to just break the dam down. They're not yeah. stuck. They're not right. stuck. They need they need to reach out to me. Yeah. Um, I kind of I'm sure Derek has an affinity for first time home buyers. I have an affinity for first time business buyers. I uh, come from the corporate world. I want to help break those chains like I did it. It's miserable. You know, you learn a lot of good skills. It wasn't for nothing, but uh, you can apply those to your own business and do a lot better. Um, uh, I wanted to have uh, David, the new owner of Worldwide Granite on here, but it was just kind of short notice. But uh, he'll come on 
another show down the road, but he's down there training too. So he also didn't know anything about the granite business. And that's kind of one of the, the gaps that we got to bridge when you buy a business or you say there's a business you're interested in. Sometimes that there's a seller training involved where if you don't know the industry, like, Oh, I can't buy this business without this. And that's part of the things we work out. Like how long, how long the, the seller is going to stick around. Like in that, in that case, the sellers are going to stick around for a few months, make sure he's good to go, knows the business inside and out. So Jason, you should get a hold of Lonnie and, and nominate yourself for a show. He has profit fisheries. I hope to have Chinook salmon and ling cod this summer. Um, I don't know about you, but those are two of my favorites. So that's a, that's a great oh. excuse to do a story. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll have to do that one in the field. I'll join you. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, he'll take, Lonnie will take a camera with him and then yep. <laughs> I'll put the video together from Montana, show people what it's like, and then I'll really want to come back to Oregon. Lonnie, what's a phone number people can get a hold of you at? Uh, 541 450 eight eight three nine email works really well too and what's that l w o o d r u f f at t world.com okay i'm going to stick that up there too so that is um first i'll put cat okay hold on casey i got you on there send nominees to leads that's for Ro rosa real estate and then this is how you get a hold of lonnie if you want to sit down and chat and find a way to change your world and maybe do something completely different from what you're doing or just tweak what you're doing a little bit and change it you know i mean that's what you do you said you yeah. love you really like what you do don't you i, I nerd out on what i do i absolutely <laughs> love it i got a, i got a couple degrees i did the corporate thing and i i get a i get exposure to a bunch of entrepreneurs business models everything i look at businesses like puzzle pieces and i just yeah I, I i love what i do and yeah if you anybody's got questions about selling buying just reach out Re email me call me find me on facebook message me i'm all about having coffee and just having conversations all right man lonnie thanks for coming by today too and lonnie brought me hold on i'll get i gotta get up there <laughs> I spent a lot of time where Rick's going, so I brought him a couple gifts. Lonnie has been to Montana quite a while. He spent a lot of time there, but he also knows me. So here's the first book. This is a very typical, okay, this is the Montana book. You need this, right? But this is where Lonnie knows me. Because he knows my weaknesses. This is my weaknesses. And you guys are going to see this because this is Montana ghost towns and gold camps. Oh, my God. That is, this is like... Where everybody else would go, oh, yeah, they're old buildings. I'd be going, oh, my God, this is a story. I'm going there. And so I now know, and in Montana, it's a big state, and there's lots of ghost towns. So I have now got, I'm prepared and ready to go. He came by today and gave me my book, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> so, Lonnie, thank you, and we look forward to having you uh, for the rest of the year. We, we'll hang in there, and we'll figure out how this is going to work. Thank you very much, Rick. All right, Seth, see you later. All right, thank you. All right so that's how it works. Trans World, uh, Derek Roser uh, Real Estate Group, Buck Sanitary Service, and Chris Dental. Um, I was talking to Tim, who um, is like my brother. He was he he run he does all of my um, boosting and stuff, and so he's an administrator on my Facebook page. Fortunately, I just put him on there a while back, so he has access to all the other pages. So what we're going to end up doing is taking this off of YouTube. We'll download it and then we'll put it on the other uh, the other uh, channels on Facebook. Uh, so all the people will get access to it. It's just going to come in a different way. Um, is that what I was planning to do? No. Um, <laughs> and I said to Tim, should I talk about this, do you think? And he goes, I would. It's ha That's just you, Rick. And it's like I was on the phone with my wife today and I honestly said to her, you know what, hon? I honestly, I just want to sit down and cry. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just so um, done. And she said, just remember, God's in it. And I went, yep. You ever have times like that in your life when you got so much going on? My son is going to get here tonight with a U-Haul and a trailer and i've got movers coming on friday we're packing up the rig and taking off and then to have facebook shut down my profile page 
and put every all that at risk it's i it's just like so much to to think about and um and it's just so stupid because I, you know, it, it's people hacking into my account, I think, but we live in such a world where we really can't say the things that we want to say without there being a cost. And I'm sure there's some of you out there that are clapping your hands and saying, good, I want Rick Dancer to shut up. Well, here's the problem for you. I'm not shutting up. Um, and I'll oh, see out oh, here. Now some of you are, have arrived for the party. Here we go. So who, 408 mile 408. Is it true that Rick Dancer got vaxxed? At least that's what I heard. Um, I hope this isn't offensive, but who gives a fuck? What? What's it? That's what you heard? It's rumors? What? I mean, that's the best we can come up with, whether Rick Dancer got vaxxed or not. Good God, that is such bullshit. That's what I heard. And I'm sorry, 408, 408, whatever that is. Uh, you know what's really more important? I heard Rick Dancer really gives a damn about people. I heard Rick Dancer um, helps people. I hear Rick Dancer, does, you can't do positive. It has to be about, about that. I'm, I'm over the vaccination shit and the mask shit. I'm over it. I'm done. I'm dreaming. I'm doing what Lonnie's doing. I'm dreaming about my life and things going on. And it's time for all of us to quit asking stupid questions like that. I know the teacher said there's never a stupid question, but he and she was wrong. Um, thank you. Share it with your Facebook page. I appreciate your help. Uh, Gary, they say they shut mine down for security reasons. Two years later, I don't have it back. Uh, yeah, that's where, that's what we're going through. Um, but we have all kinds of other places to put it. So I think we're going to be fine. Um, and, and, you know, the nice thing is my clients are sticking with me. Nobody's yet. Yeah, nobody's business. Who's been vaxxed or unvaxxed and 408 mile 408. You know, if I got too harsh with you, I'm sorry. Well, I'm kind of sorry. I mean, it's like, I mean, it's, it's, I, here's, I, I, I don't care. I'm just in a mood. I am in a mood today. It's like going into someone's house and asking them a personal question. Just because I'm a public figure doesn't mean you have to know every damn thing about my life. And, and there's so many more important things about me than whether or not I got vaxxed. <laughs> and that's the same with every person in here. What if we stopped asking people that question and we just started saying, hey, what are you doing to better my community? What are you doing, Rick, to better your business? What are you doing to give people more of a voice? Maybe those are the questions we should be asking. Not, do you think masks are okay? Or do you, are you anti-mask or faux mask? Or do you not get the vaccine? Or you think the vaccine's stupid or what? I mean, why don't we start asking real questions? Like, oh, I know one. What are we going to do about the rising cost of energy? Hmm. Because a ton of poor people and middle class people are, are going to be losing a lot of money out of their savings accounts because they can't afford their heating bills. That's an interesting question. What are we going to do about affordable housing? Now, there's something we could all get behind and do something about. What are we going to do about um, or what else? Oh, how about sex trafficking? It's a huge issue in Lane County and in Oregon. What are we going to do about sex trafficking? Huh? Maybe we should ask those questions instead of all the other stupid questions. Maybe that's what we should be doing is start asking questions. What are we going to do to make sure that our kids get a proper education? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are we going to do? I heard one out of five kids in Oregon is a dropout. So here's the question. When you want to, when this thing wants to come out about asking whether Rick Dancer has been vaxxed or not, or your neighbor's been vaxxed, maybe the question you need to ask is, what are we going to do to make sure that five out of five kids in Oregon graduates from high school? Now, that's a good question. That's a really good question. And if we stop talking about everything else like masks and vax, maybe we could come up with some real solutions to the real problems in our state. And what are you going to do to improve our children's mental health and adults' mental health?
All of those things are really great questions. So yeah, it's been one of those days and 408, 408, whatever the hell it was. Uh, thank you for opening that door because I needed to talk about that. Would you ever play Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> My 12 year old wants to know. <laughs> I don't know. Will I ever play Dungeons and Dragons? If it got me connected to a kid who wanted to, I would play Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I know. I, I, don't, I don't know. Oh, would I ever play Dungeons and Dragons? I'll tell you. Oh, Gary will. He was playing it back in 1980, 1978. All right. That's probably all we should do with this topic before I get really gnarly. <laughs> so when you're walking down the street and you walk past somebody, don't look at whether they have a mask or not. Don't think about whether they've been maxed or not. When you walk by them, say, how you doing? How can I make your life better? Have a, have a nice day. Have a good day. Those are the things we can talk about. All right. We'll see you right here. So tomorrow, tell your friends it's going to be on Facebook and all that tomorrow. We'll get that on there. Um, pray to God that they we're, we're looking for new sources, but it would just be nice to uh, to not have to. Um, deal with this right now. So if Facebook would just, and no, still hasn't brought it up. If they would just get my page up, that would be really nice. And I will see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night we have Kim's back from Disney World. Uh, we're going to talk about school choice. And we're also, I think we're going to talk to Mercury Metal. So we'll have all that going on. So the other thing you guys can do is share this on your page. Uh, except YouTube, wait and do it on Facebook because YouTube and Facebook, they don't like each other. And so if you try to share something from YouTube to Facebook, Facebook won't send it out. They just let it sit there. So it doesn't really do a lot of good. I sure know a lot about these social media people that don't like me, don't I? <laughs> Have a good night.